Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day because I totally am. I'm here to do a book review and I'm actually pretty excited about this book review because I enjoyed the book so much. Uh, so I don't have a physical copy of this particular book. I read a digital copy. So the name of the book is... A Practical Heathen's Guide to Asatru by Patricia M. Lefelve. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. And I'm hoping that you can see the book cover. A really groovy representation there of Odin Father riding Sleipnir. I dig that immensely. So I have been... Because of my work with Odin Father as my patron god, I have an interest in Asatru. But I've heard some varying opinions about Asatru, those who follow Asatru, and those who identify as Asatru or heathen and things like that. And so I was a little leery um, about looking into it at first, but I felt that it was important that I that I educate myself some more, especially given the fact that Kathy and I uh, have the pagan meetup that we started uh, right about, I think it's been three years now. You know, I feel like if for nothing else, I need to educate myself so that I can help steer folks if that is, if acid true is what is their calling kind of a thing. So I was looking for a beginner guide, kind of like just something that was introducing me to what acid true was and to give me some understanding and I and really I wanted some information that would tell me the differences between uh, my practice which is Wicca and acid true and how um, what kind of rituals there are, uh, how they're put together, um, what is the cosmology. And I know a little, I know a bit about the cosmology of the Norse pantheon just because I've studied it already myself. Um, but I found this to be a really interesting first book. And I think, I mean, I'm going to, it's not going to be the only book that I ever read about Asa True, but I think that it was a really good um choice for me to make based on what I'm able to take from it, you know, after finishing it. So let's cover some of the information that I like to share about books. So the uh, copyright date for this book is 2013. Um, and it's right at about 250 pages. And that includes a really nice glossary at the end, which I feel like I will probably go back to because there's words that I am not comfortable with because I haven't used them. So the glossary is really good. I like Patricia's writing style because she does footnotes. She has an extensive bibliography, and that's also part of the 250 pages, but her writing style is not um, dry academic. Um, she's very personable because she herself is an is um, an acid true. Um, there's actually uh, in the beginning of the book about the author, she has been a heathen for approximately 17 years at the point in 2013 when the book was released. So you add on another six years since then. So that's like 23 years as a heathen um, and a pagan for 24 plus, so like a 30 year pagan. Okay. Um, she, it, it the little ditty here um, talks about uh, some of the the groups, part of the, the community that she's a part of. Um, but I don't want to get into that because I don't want to have to explain it because I'm not sure that I have the best grasp. So I don't want to say something inappropriate and offend someone. 
But needless to say, she is a person who knows what she's talking about when it comes to Asatru, and I felt like she did a really good job of explaining things. So I'm looking at the table of contents just to kind of refresh myself um, as to, you know, how the book was set up and things like that, and which I think is a, is a double kind of... Um, positive thing as to how she wrote the book because she actually starts with cosmology and introducing you to the gods. So this is truly really a good beginner book. If you don't know what Asatru is, then she's going to give you an introduction to heathenry. That's the first chapter. The second chapter is a brief history about Asatru and how it came to be. She talks to you about the gods and goddesses, who they are, what they represent, and does a really nice, concise job of spending a chapter going over things. And of course, for me, some of it was a refresher, but that's okay. Um, and then she goes into the ancestor wor worship in heathenry. Um, heathenry, Asatru, there's a lot of there's a lot of words that are linked with the Norse pantheon and the reconstructionist way in which folks are uh, celebrating that pantheon in a modern context. And so um, I think different folks, like Wicca, witchcraft, paganism, there's a lot of words out there. And so it's important to understand them and, and know the difference. So um, I feel like I don't have that great of a grasp. I think that... Who I'm, I'm leery to even say anything and have like folks like freak out at me. So I, it, this is my opinion. I feel like heathenry is a really good broad term that one could use for identifying with the Norse pantheon in a reconstructionist um, capacity. I think that heathenry might, and again, this is my opinion, I think that heathenry um, is probably as broad of a term as Wicca is, if you are a practicing witch. Because I feel like paganism is what, paganism is any spiritual system that is not part of that Abrahamic, those three book religions. Um, of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. So if you're not one of those, then you're pagan. So that's a big, broad umbrella term paganism is, as my as I understand it. Wicca is the um, the goddess tradition, and then w witchcraft. Um, I, a lot of people will um, identify witchcraft as um, someone who manipulates energy and performs magic. Okay. That's a pretty, I'm using some pretty broad terms here. So I feel like heathenry is like Wicca in terms of like an ashlan or a, like a, a chart of things. And I feel like heathenry or, um, Asatru is probably more along like a tradition term. So like a gardenerian, or something along those lines. And there's another word too. Um, I think it was theoism. Is another word that Patricia used in her text. Um, and I'm not entirely sure um, what those differences are. If you're interested, I'm sure you can Google it as I could kind of a thing. Getting back to the book. Ancestor worship is incredibly important to heathens and so there's an entire chapter on how that applies and how that works with heathenry um another um section of spirits that are important would be the spirits of the land the spirits of trees and things like that um i don't i'm not super whites that is a word that i'm comfortable saying there's another word Land Vietir. A lot of these words are really based in um, Icelandic and Swedish and Norse, Norwegian, um, those tongues, and I am not super comfortable pronouncing those words. So if I 
totally brutalized it. I'm really sorry. Um, but anyhow, so she talks about those and the importance of working with those spirits. She talks about how heathens look at time. Um, as a as a witch, I really look at past, present, and future, and everything has like its place. And for heathenry, it's a little bit different. Um, heathens look at the past as it's done, okay, which I get. Um, something that happened in the past is done. What happens in the present is, you know, important and the choices that you're making now are going to shape the future. But the future isn't necessarily something that um, is destined, okay? The future isn't necessarily as important to heathens as what's happening in the present and the lessons learned from the past. That's kind of what I've gleaned from reading this particular book, okay? So I thought that was really interesting. Um, they talk about, um, or excuse me, Patricia talks about um, layers of community and how there's words for those. I thought that was really interesting. Then she gets into runes and the charms and the magic that's used within heathenry, uh, which again, really interesting. And then she gets into ethics and hospitality and oaths. Oaths are really important. Astatrus are very honor bound. And so their word and making oaths mean a lot to them as it's presented by Patricia. And I can appreciate that very much. Um, and then finally, part two, she goes into um, specific rituals and um, heathen ways. And she talks about bloats for holy tides. So bloats is a kind of ritual where you make an offering. And so um, I think that was something, that particular concept was something that I was especially uh, wanting to have a better understanding of. And I feel like I have done that since reading this book. Um, do I know everything about bloats? Oh no, don't even. This is just the tip of the iceberg for uh, the understanding that I hope to gain in the future. And then she um, ends the, the book with a really nice chapter on um, sample life rituals. Rituals. So things like naming, uh, naming days for babies and um, weddings, funerals, um, different things like that. She also talks, she also has some sample rituals for their uh, holy days, um, which I don't, I won't call them Sabbaths because I don't believe that that's a, a good heathen term. Um, but there are some differences between Wicca, which that was another understanding that I had hoped to gain. Um, so some, some Sabbaths that as a witch I celebrate that are also part of heathenry that, that kind of stick out to me would be Yule. Yule is a big uh, time in general for heathens, and it's actually celebrated over a 12-day period, which I found really interesting. So Yule, Astara, um, Midsummer, so like the big, the, the, like the, the equinoxes and the solstices, uh, those were very common, those were common between. And then there were um, there's holy days that are a little different from Wicca that are celebrated around the same time. Um, one, one that like really stood out for me that was something really interesting was like the blessing of the plow. And so, um, from a, an agrarian standpoint, I can see the importance of blessing of the plow in the springtime. So that's kind of like starting this whole cycle of growing and, and preparing and having food growing so that you have that food that will take you through the, the dark time of the year in the winter. Um, so I really appreciated that. So all in all, I felt, I feel like the book was very worthwhile. Me spending the time to read. And as far as like a broom situation goes, um, I, again, as I said at the top of this video, I feel like this was like probably, you know, and, and of course, you know, having read one book, <laughs> you know, this might not be the best of state statements, but 
for what knowledge that I have of right now, I feel like this is probably the best book that I could have started off with just because there was a little bit of everything and explained very well. And so I feel like, you know, I, I learned enough that I want to take it to the next level and, um, and learn more. Now, do I think that I am heathen? No, I don't really think so. Um, I, there are many parts of heathenry that uh, that speak to me. Um, definitely the gods, because I've worked with a, a number of them, including Odin Father. Um, but and, and there's also things like um, the honor and 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 living a respectful life that that speak to me. Um, but I mean, I've been practicing witchcraft for so long that I can't imagine making a, a, a big shift like that. Um, but you know what? I am an eclectic witch and there are some things like a, um, a bloat and using a bloat in my practice. That's something that's kind of speaking to me and it's something that may or may not happen. I don't know. There are some folks that might be offended by, um, by that statement and I apologize for that. Um, but, uh, it is what it is. And I mean no disrespect for you and how you choose to celebrate your heathen path, if that happens to be how you identify. Um, I just think that there there's value in every spiritual system. And so we kind of have to, um, my philosophy on life is to keep learning and to never stop learning. And so that's part of what this is about. So, um, okay, so let's, on that note, let's kind of end this video. And I I don't want to kind of prattle on about uh, too much more um, because I can probably like just keep talking, right? So uh, I hope you found this video um, informative. If there is a heathen or acid true book out there that you think um, I should read next, then I would like to hear about it. Um, I have some that are kind of on my radar. I am still uh, not really, this isn't specifically acid true, but I'm still working my way through um, Taking Up the Runes by Diana Paxson. And I know that I have her Odin book that came out uh, last year, I believe. I know that's on the uh, there it is. I don't want to pull it out. I might cause a book landslide. That's kind of on my list of things to read. Um, but if you have a suggestion, I would like to hear about it as far as like, where should I go next? Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Um, we like to have you come back here to the channel and see what we're doing. Um, and, uh, be sure to check out that description box. There's lots of social media links in there for Instagram, things like that. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at heartofthewitchespath at yahoo.com. Or you can always put a question in the comments and I will... Um, try to answer it as quickly as possible. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to walk the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.